Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most noteworthy, entertaining, and all memorable moments from The Kelly Clarkson Show. Ariel's very sweet. She's very nice. She's also a redhead, so yeah. I'm going to teach you about redhead someday. <laughs> Number 20, 80 for Brady press conference. In a fun twist on the usual interview, Kelly Clarkson invites her guests to join a press conference about the show. The cast of 80 for Brady all play along as they're questioned about their time with Clarkson, and they're able to show off their sense of humour. Lily Tomlin, in particular, lights up the panel with her dry delivery. Oh my gosh. Uh... Well, that's why I didn't join in. It was... <laughs> <laughs> but she's not the only one grabbing our attention, as Jane Fonda notably steals the spotlight when she asks about tight ends. Tight ends. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Could you explain? I want one, but I don't know quite what it is. That leads to Sally Field providing an answer that becomes an instant highlight in and of itself. We wish talk shows would always be this funny, random, and self-referential. Why is it called tight end? Because he's, because he's tighter in. He's closer. Number 19, aspiring aviator meets Thunderbird pilot. Spotlighting a female pilot in the Thunderbirds Kelly Clarkson welcomes Major Michelle Curran to the show. She salutes her guest's amazing career, and we get to hear about its origins. Along with being a welcome tribute to women in male-dominated fields, this segment also links Curran up with one of her admirers. No, you aim higher, don't Woo! aim at all. Yes. <laughs> well, I have a surprise for Amelia. Major Michelle Curran is here, come on out! <laughs> the young Amelia can't believe her eyes, and it's clear how much her idol means to her. Both cute and heartwarming, the interview builds to the aspiring pilot being invited to hang out with Curran on the job. The little girl's priceless reaction is too sweet for words. And you're going to be a Thunderbird for a day. <laughs> you can. Thank you. <laughs> Number 18, Steve Carell says his iconic line. The first episode of The Kelly Clarkson Show deserved a special introduction to the host. It's hard to imagine a better one than this amazing reference to the 40-year-old virgin. No, Kelly Clarkson! The film star Steve Carell makes a surprise appearance, delivering his iconic line one more time for Clarkson. Fans of the waxing scene from the movie won't be disappointed. Corral takes the microphone and busts out his best, giving the quote the gravitas it deserves. Ladies and gentlemen, ah, Kelly Clarkson! The only thing that could make this better would be if the actor became a permanent announcer for the show. Number 17, Cake Fight. Making cakes is fun, and it's even more entertaining with a comedian. Kelly Clarkson welcomes expert Duff Goldman to show her and the other guests the ropes. Things hysterically start to break down, however, when Joel McHale improvises. I'm like, is this the cut side? Hold Joel's up. doing great. Okay. Joel's doing great. Okay. Look at Joel doing great. He's got it all in there. What's next? It's also hilarious to watch the trainees dish out frosting with reckless abandon. Plus, seeing certain ingredients get tossed everywhere, we can't help but revel in the silliness. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, a mini food fight starts. There's even a funny joke involving icing before it's all over. Kelly, I'm done. Okay. I, I wrote it all out. Right. Carrie no. Underwood. Carrie, I'm I tell you. You might not want to eat some of these desserts, but you'll definitely laugh at their creation. Number 16, an emotional reunion. 
Presenting a feel-good story, Clarkson welcomes the stars of a viral video, Gabby and Nick, for a reunion. Before this, we spend time with the couple's moms, who describe how the clip came to be and discuss Down syndrome, dispelling myths and destigmatizing it. A big misconception are that, you know, people with Down syndrome are, have to live with their parents the rest of their life and they need, you know, an exorbitant amount of support where that, you know, could not be further from the truth. Then Gabby takes the spotlight to talk about herself and her career, not realizing her partner is waiting in the wings. Ready with a huge surprise, Nick appears in a moment that'll have you smiling. It's completely heartwarming in the best possible way. He also gets to say a few words, making this one of the more touching segments of its kind. She's amazing. She's beautiful. Um, and I am so proud. Number 15, Kelly and Christina Aguilera are twins separated at birth. After seeing this segment, we want Christina Aguilera to come back more often. Her chemistry with Kelly Clarkson is electric as they talk about their pasts and shared experiences. Being from the same generation, the two joke about being twins separated at birth. The natural flow of the conversation alone makes us want to listen for hours. So Honestly, those were work. my darkest moments because you're so busy and you're you're just we so are down. Twins. We're we, separated. I our know. Twins. I've heard you in interviews, and I'm like, I know. <laughs> I'm like, they also find time to laugh about their kids being spoiled compared to their modest upbringings. They can chuckle about anything, including haunted houses, making this an amusing yet heartfelt segment for the ages. Walk through haunted houses that I do. Like, oh, I don't do that. For the neighborhood. <laughs> See, I, I get into the it. The last time I went to a haunted house, I literally, I was throwing women and children out of the way. The duo can't stop having fun, and we can't stop having fun watching them. Number 14, Jack Black as Bowser. Several the Super Mario Bros movie cast members show up for this press tour appearance. Jack Black, however, is mysteriously absent until Clarkson finds him hiding backstage. In full Bowser costume, Black has a funny moment with the host as he explains his predicament. What's wrong, buddy? I'm not going out there. Why? Because everybody said we were going to get dressed in costumes and I'm the only stupid guy that got dressed in a costume and I'm not going out there now. She then gives him the chance to pull off a super entertaining entrance. Knowing Black, you can tell that he was just waiting to unleash his energy. We're really glad that he decided to do his role justice by dressing up and posing for the audience. His co-stars might not have followed his lead, but they definitely gave him the spotlight to earn some laughs. I think it was like a really funny trick they played on me. Like, we're all gonna get dressed in character, and then they didn't, and I can't get it off now. It's like, someone put super glue in there. I think you look awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Okay. I'm not even talking to you guys. Number 13, Family Reunion. In the earlier days of the pandemic, Ali dealt with a cancer diagnosis without being able to see her family. This wonderful segment gives her an opportunity to interact with them again in person, as Clarkson surprises her with both her mum and later her sister and brother-in-law. I, mean, I lied because uh, Krista, she's totally here, so yeah! she's like, and so is You can tell by her reaction alone just how much Ali appreciates the kind gesture. Clarkson's good deed never fails to remind us of what matters most. Not only do we find ourselves getting teary-eyed, we also feel uplifted by the humanity on display here. <laughs> learning things and they did not, there was no way I had any idea of Oh my gosh, all. I love it though. Number 12, Teddy Swim's duet. 
Kelly Clarkson is funny, entertaining, and always shines bright when she's putting her vocal prowess on display. This segment perfectly encapsulates her talents for both performance and collaboration. It's taking a toll on me, trying my best to keep from tearing the skin off my bone. Her duetting Lose Control with Teddy Swims himself is nothing short of stunning, as we're mesmerised by beautiful harmonies. Clarkson knows how to make her presence known without overpowering Swims, finding the perfect moments to showcase her range. And we'd be lying if we said seeing both stars belt their hearts out at just the right times doesn't fill us with joy. Considering this is from a holiday episode, it might be one to come back to every year as a gleeful tradition. Number 11. Clarkson's son interrupts Chris Martin's performance. When you have to go, you have to go. This is definitely true in the case of Kelly Clarkson's son, Remy, during this performance. As Coldplay frontman Chris Martin sings Yellow, Remy hilariously interrupts to make his need to go relieve himself known. I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Me too. Taking advantage of the mishap, Clarkson throws in a funny joke to top it all off. And it was all yellow! <laughs> Everyone takes the honesty in stride as the audience laughs along with the performers. Martin even offers up his approval in a cute high five with the little guy, cementing this as one of the daytime talk show's best moments. Come on, you go to the bathroom. You go. Number 10, getting competitive with Ariana Grande. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, were you in a, ma a movie called Taken? I'm quite taken by you, yes, that's correct. Liam Neeson! Ahead of The Voice season 21 premiere, fans got a taste of the dynamic between Clarkson and the competition series' then newest coach. They went heads ahead in a game where they had to guess celebrity voices, and it was epic. Oh, oh. no, is it? Oh, if I'm wrong, I'm gonna be so mad. Were you in the fly? Oh, yes, yes, my teeth. Oh, yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> It's hilarious watching Clarkson get hyped up as she gives in to her competitive side. Seeing her excitement and frustration while she tries to decipher the mystery voices never gets old. I am Groot. Oh, 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 oh no, no, no! Oh, no, no, no! Um, 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 um. Grande's reaction to everything from the floating voice to her competitor's excitement and frustration is pretty entertaining too. The Seven Rings singer also proves graceful in defeat. I've is it Vin Diesel? No. It is yeah! Vin Diesel! Yeah! Yeah! Kelly has won! Perhaps she was just saving all that fire for the voice. Our only complaint is that this segment wasn't long enough. Number 9 Gwen Stefani shares how Blake Shelton impressed her family. If you were dropped in the wilderness and could only choose one of the voice coaches to accompany you, who would you choose? I feel like Blake because he uh the hell? He's, got, he's got all these <laughs> He's got all useless. these acres of ranch land. I have like 7,000 acres of land as well. <laughs> well, according to the others, Blake Shelton's a popular choice, much to Kelly's dismay. This nicely segues into a great story about how Shelton earned the approval of Gwen Stefani's family on a trip to Oklahoma. I remember the first time I went to Oklahoma with my family. We are like from Anaheim. We'd never seen even trees before. So we were like, wow, this is like crazy. And the Hollaback Girl singer even gets up and acts the moment out in order to do it justice. And he gets in the back of the truck. He has like Chainsaw. a big chain and he pulls it out. He wraps it around the tree and like pull, like my whole family's like, <gasps> oh my god, he's a man! Apparently, the way to plant your roots in your significant other's family is by pulling up a trunk. 
Shelton's earlier comment to Clarkson probably threw more shade than the tree he moved, though. Kelly, you can't even beat me on your own show. I can't even beat you on my own show. <laughs> Number eight, a little bit of Lexus with a whole lot of Kelly. Are you ready? Let's do it. Alexis Rose's audition for Cabaret has to be one of the most iconic moments in Schitt's Creek's entire run. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit of la 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 la, a little bit of Alexis. So when actress Annie Murphy dropped by to promote the show's final season, we were thrilled to get a little bit more Alexis. I'm a little bit single. Even when I'm not. As if that wasn't epic enough on its own, she was joined by the host who got her own verse too. I got like 20 jobs and I talk a lot. I'm a whole lot married. My man's so hot. Clarkson throws herself entirely into the character, and their duet is just joyous from start to finish. It isn't just Schitt's Creek fans who love the remix either. Favorite. The clip hit the internet. I watched it. I let out a scream that could be heard across the ocean. <laughs> if Alexis Rose ever gets a spin-off show, we totally need Kelly on it. Maybe they could form a musical duo. Hide your diamonds. Hide your exes. I'm a little bit of Alexis. Number seven, ventriloquism isn't for everyone. It's hard to believe, but not everyone finds a room full of ventriloquist dolls all that hot. But never in the history of the planet has any woman ever said ventriloquist, that's hot. In this case, it provides some excellent comedic material, albeit at some poor, unsuspecting individual's expense. So the dummies are all lined up in the main room, the first room you walk in in the apartment. They're all lined up and sitting on the walls. It's kind of creepy when you walk in. I mean, in. it kind of sounds like a Dateline special. Yeah. Jeff Dunham's story about using his talents on a date will have you cracking up hard. He talks about bringing a woman back to his place, but not quite for the reason that you might expect. I wanted to see her reaction when the <laughs> dummy that was in the corner that I had secretly radio controlled moved when I wasn't looking and she was. Yeah, yeah, so uh, this is the female audience going, oh, you're horrible. The anecdote isn't necessarily great PR for ventriloquists in the dating pool, but it's pretty hilarious. I'm sitting there with her like this and I'm looking over the other way and I had the radio control under a pillow over here so I moved it and the dummy moved his head and his eyes. Still, maybe he should just leave the sweet talking to Peanut. After all, the puppet seems to win Kelly over while rivaling her excitable chattiness. Has anyone ever said they're your biggest fan? Yes. They are liars! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh Number six, laughing with Sandra Bullock. Oh. That would be so cool. Oh, be so my cool. mom is going to watch this and be like, how did you not freak out? I'm so cool. I'm fine. Apparently, even celebrities get starstruck in the company of certain Academy Award winners. While interviewing Sandra Bullock, Clarkson vows to keep calm. She barely lasts 30 seconds, though, before jokingly asking the actress, Did you vote for Justin or me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't tell me. But Bullock's response is pretty funny and helps break the ice. The, look, the look, good look. thing is, is yeah, that really you cute curly Does hair. it matter who I voted for? <laughs> Does it? The nervous fangirling adorably persists, but it also starts to feel like we're watching two old friends catch up. My parents were singers both dead. Um, it's okay. But they were I'm singers, okay though. Okay, but yeah. that's cool. Wait, you don't sing? That they're dead? Or no, that, they that they're singers. That's so sad that they're dead. I'm sweating. <laughs> oh my God, it's the worst date ever. And it doesn't take long before the pair descend into fits of giggles. Clearly, no matter how big of a star you are, you still crumble in the presence of your idols. Luckily for us, it made for a pretty memorable interview and a great viral moment. I don't know what to do <laughs> so with wait, my hands. So wait, but speaking, you said you don't like doing furniture and stuff like that, DJ? but do you like DJing? <laughs> Wiki, wiki, wiki. <laughs> Number five, Dr. Robotnik and Ace Ventura meet some animals. That's the move. <laughs> Very good. Dude. So, James, go ahead. Put, you, put your hand out, James. Jim Carrey knows animals, thanks to his stint as Ace Ventura. Is that the tank? Excuse me. So you can imagine our delight when he and his Sonic the Hedgehog castmates joined Kelly for an animal segment. Of course, Kerry turned it into comedy gold. It's Wild. the biggest sick bug I've ever Wild. seen. First, he hilariously identifies the rare stick buck before jokingly facing off against and ultimately befriending an actual hedgehog. Uh, 
You say bye to Sonic? Robotnik, can I bye. have it back? Do you think it's bye, okay? So oh, the fun times don't end there as he later introduces himself to a bearded dragon perched upon his shoulder. Hi, Ace Ventura. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> he continues to channel the pet detective when wildlife educator Coyote Peterson brings out a baby anaconda, although he's clearly a little rusty. But what does a baby one look like, right? Yeah. A baby one? Looks just like this. They can be just as poisonous as the adults. <laughs> Actually, not poisonous or venomous. Oh, really? I'm in. No, it's a constrictor right. species, so they I've wrap... I've never met you before, so you could say anything. You can trust Kerry to bring hilarity to any situation, and it was great to see Ace Ventura again, even briefly. Number four, wine tasting with Kevin Hart. Ideally, I recommend holding by the stem. When you're holding oh, by the stem, yes. you're not actually... If you're holding by the, by the yes. bulb, you can. Oh. <laughs> the comedian and host got their Christmas buzz on with a wine tasting demonstration that's sure to raise your spirits. Kelly tentatively listens to expert sommelier Ian Cobble, eager to see when she can start drinking. Okay, that was, can I taste that it was now? super natural. <laughs> not, not, not yet. You gotta calm not down again. You gotta calm down a little this bit. This is the worst so foreplay. Meanwhile, every time the camera pans to Kevin Hart, he's either pulling a hilarious face or has some witty quip ready. I think I'm about to drink Carl Lewis because it's about <laughs> less. It's guaranteed to make viewers spit out their own wine. And this all happens before they'd even had a chance to get marginally sloshed. Somebody call my wife, tell her I'm coming home active. <laughs> it's by far one of the funniest things to happen on the show to date. Yet, like a delicious red wine, it ends on a sweet and heartwarming note. This is 1979. That'll this bring a tear to your eye, no joke. Thank that's, you, man. That's, that's for real. That's, that's one of the, real. This is one of the most rare wines of the world. Number three, Kelly Clarkson's kids interview Aquaman. In a moment that will make your heart melt, Clarkson invited two very special Aquaman fans to interview its star, Jason Momoa. You want to give Aquaman a hug? You want to give him a hug? Yeah. Are you nervous? Uh, Are you nervous? Nice. Come here. Are you nervous, Lotus? I do. I do have kids. Okay. Her youngest child, Remy, is a tad shy in the actor's presence. But his big sister, River Rose, goes in for the most hard-hitting and cutest questions ever. Do you know a little mermaid? <laughs> that was her question in my office, and I was like, ask him. For instance, does Aquaman know the little mermaid? She also presents Momoa with a drawing before asking something we've all wondered before. Where okay. does Aquaman go to a bathroom? That's what she asked in August. Where does Aquaman go to the bathroom? <laughs> Everywhere. She then encourages her little brother to ask questions, but he's good with his high fives. You like Aquaman. You watch it. Come on. She's like, she's the, she's the talker, and he's the sensitive one. He's like... <laughs> hey, just chill with Aquaman. He's yeah, chill, you chill it. If Kelly ever needs the day off, she could easily leave the show in the capable hands of her adorable kids. Number two, a birth father thanks his child's adoptive parents. This interview is guaranteed to take you through a plethora of emotions. This gentleman beside me, this is my husband, Rick. Um, then he's holding our two-year-old son, Princeton. He, we just recently adopted him. Hey, Princeton. The Jones Baldwins went viral following a photo shoot celebrating the newest addition to their family. While they're all a beautiful bunch, there's no denying that little Princeton, who was just two years old when this episode aired, steals the show. And you know, I was like, okay, well, well give him here, you know, and yeah. I just put him on my chest. <laughs> But while you're ooing, ahhing, and laughing at the toddler's antics, you'll also want to keep the tissues nearby. The segment sees Kelly introducing John, Princeton's biological father, who thanks the Jones Baldwins for everything they've done for his son. I want to thank you, Kia, and your family for caring for Princeton and just everything. Uh, Thank you I couldn't. for, you know, for the gift. No, you're welcome. Watching their interaction is priceless and really highlights the importance of family, biological or otherwise. 
Moments like this are rare, and this one's particularly remarkable. We got in contact with each other mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago when the adoption was finalized because before then we couldn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I told him, I was like, it's time for you to meet your son mm -hmm. yeah. um, and be acquainted with him um, because it, this is our son. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. John Cena Surprises Show Majosi Some men act rough like John Cena, some men get buff like John Cena. We used to be cool when I used to come too, now you want to act tough like John Cena. Show Majosi stopped by The Kelly Clarkson Show back in Season 1. Naturally, the host asks her what inspired her popular song, John Cena. The singer goes on to explain how she became a huge fan of the star while growing up in a rural South African village. I made this song because it's really like about, you know, because John Cena always used to say, you can't see me. Mm -hmm. So when we used to play wrestling with my cousins, I used to pretend to be John Cena. Kelly promises her that since the show's in its early days, they're not quite at the surprise guest stage just yet. Or are they? The wrestler surprises the artist while she's performing John Cena. She has a total freak out all over the place while he keeps calmly dancing. <laughs> Show's reaction and their subsequent conversation are among the best things to happen on the show so far. It's really cool because it's a high energy song and you could take something negative in your life yeah. and express it creatively mm -hmm. and you've literally reached an audience around the world. Oh my God. Did we forget another standout moment from the Kelly Clarkson show? Let us know in the comments below. So we wanted to do something special for y'all. So oh. here we go. It's a full on. Ladies, don't feel free to help yourselves to the table trays. Feel free to help yourselves. Oh, we will. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.